Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. And in this regular to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which as usual popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with AMD and ray tracing support for their next generation of Radeon parts and what the company are planning in 2019. As we all know, AMD currently do not have a product for the high end gamers. Instead, they have the RX 580 and below along with RX Vega. But we all know that Navi is almost certain to be released in 2019. In fact, I was recently speaking to a source, I'll link that video in the description, who works very closely with AMD, well, the company he works with works very closely with AMD. And he told me in no uncertain terms that not only will the next generation of Ryzen processors launch at Computex 2019, but AMD are also planning to launch GPUs. Once again, if you want more information on the increased core count and other bits and pieces for the Ryzen and 3000 series GPUs, you can check the link in the uh, video description. But moving to the here and now, AMD's uh, CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, has recently gone on record stating their plans, the AMD's plans, for ray tracing for the Radeon cards. Here's what she had to say. We believe we'll be very competitive overall, and that includes the high end of the GPU market. Obviously, there are new products out there from the competition. She clearly means, of course, NVIDIA's Turing. And we will set out new products as well, and we'll be right there in the mix. As it relates to ray tracing in particular, I think it's important technology, but it's important technology that takes really a time to have the ecosystem to adapt to it. And we are working closely with the ecosystem on hardware and software solutions, and expect that ray tracing will be an important element, particularly as it gets more into the mainstream, frankly, of the market. I'll link to her comments in the description of the video, along with an article which accompanies this video and its topic. But moving back to what I mentioned a few moments ago, Navi is said to be releasing in 2019. And if you recall, a short while ago, David Wang was speaking to the website for Gamer. Now, his comments were mistranslated at first, but after that, uh, native Japanese speakers actually uh, translated the text and had a more appropriate uh, translation, a more accurate translation. And they essentially said that David Wang believes in his personal opinion, ray tracing won't take off until mainstream cards are capable of running it. Uh, NVIDIA recently released a blog post where they were detailing the performance increases that they've managed to get out of Battlefield 5. They were working alongside DICE, and they have increased the performance when, ray, when ray tracing is enabled by up to 50%. This means that we are now seeing the game playable at 60fps and 1440p. To be clear here, I don't think that they can suddenly optimize the game to run at 4K 60fps. I would love to be wrong there, but it does show that developers, along with NVIDIA themselves, do have some way to go here. And that's great. That means that performance is going to continue to ri uh, rise over the next several months. And it shows that Turing does have great potential to run these titles at high resolution, at high frame rates, once further optimizations are put into place. To add to the confusion, Lisa Su last month also said in an interview with Barron's concerning the Q3 earnings for AMD, we see significant opportunities to build on this momentum as we transition to our next generation of high performance products and launch the industry's first seven nanometer x86 CPUs and discrete GPUs over the coming quarters. So then we're left with a lot of questions concerning what AMD are planning with Navi because from what the leaks have told us, Navi will put out roughly GTX 1080 to RTX 2070 levels of traditional rendering performance. It's possible then that AMD will aim to have Navi capable of running ray tracing uh, at 1080p 60fps at launch, because don't forget Navi is also said to be launching at the price point, and this is critical, of just 250 US dollars, which means that we're getting, let's say, GTX 1080 or slightly above levels of performance, but at a really good price point. Other details we do know about Navi include the fact that it has support for GDDR6 memory, but also can support HBM2, the fact that it's a monolithic die, it's not built on MCM, and supposedly there's also some rather large changes to the architecture itself. It's unclear yet whether this is the Super SIMD architecture or 
whether SuperSymde is Arcturus. If it's SuperSymde, it's possible, therefore, that it would actually just be naturally really good at running ray tracing calculations. Unfortunately, because we A, don't know whether this is true, and B, we don't know all of the details of the SuperSymde architecture AMD are working on yet, it's hard to know exactly uh, what this actually means, because we don't even know, for example, the number of shaders in Navi. Lastly, while we're on the subject, Navi itself is said to launch in a more mainstream variant first, as I just mentioned, but after that we will see a higher end SKU based upon the Navi architecture. However, we do know that Arcturus is said to launch at some point in 2020, and the high end Navi is said to launch in late 2019, possibly early 2020, so it'll be interesting exactly what AMD do there. And while we're on the subject of GPUs, NVIDIA have decided to open source the Physics SDK. It has been notoriously a black box for some time now, which has meant that if developers want to optimize it, if they want to tweak it and get it to work better with their game engine, they just have not been able to do so. But, uh, but now NVIDIA have decided to open source this and have said, and I quote, we're doing this because physics simulation, long key to immersive game and entertainment, turns out to be more important than we ever thought. Physics simulation dovetails with AI, robotics, and computer vision, self-driving vehicles, and high-performance computing. Meanwhile, we're building on more than a decade of continuous investment in this area to simulate the world with even greater fidelity while ongoing research and development to meet the needs of those working in robotics with autonomous vehicles, end quote. And that means you can download Physics SDK, uh, which is 3.4 now from GitHub, and there will be a new version, version 4.0, which is going to be released on December the 20th, and there's going to be a whole bunch of new features for this, Temporal Gauss, Seed or Solver, TGS, uh, improvements in stability, increased scalability, new bounding volume hierarchies, new infrastructures, and so much more besides. And this is going to be released under the BSD free license for new platforms, including iOS, Linux, Windows, and so on. But the NVIDIA Euler platform is going to remain consistent for the Xbox, the PlayStation 4, and finally the Nintendo Switch. And finally, we're going to discuss the possibility that Microsoft Studios are going to be acquiring yet more games developers. As we know, Microsoft have been incredibly aggressive recently, purchasing numerous studios, including Ninja Theory. But, allegedly, they are not done. There's a user by the name of Clobril, who has leaked various things in the past regarding Microsoft, and he has claimed on Twitter that not only will we see f future acquisitions from Microsoft concerning game studios, but some of them will be rather large and will, quote, surprise us. Here's what he has to say. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Microsoft Studios' growth isn't done yet. They are in active talks with multiple studios, both big and small. Some of those might surprise you more than others. It's early for them all, though. 2019 will continue the story. End quote. There is a lot of studios that you can imagine that Microsoft would certainly have their eye on. I don't exactly know who would surprise me the most. I mean, clearly, in theory, Microsoft have the cash to buy basically any game developer slash publisher out there. They have so much money. <laughs> it is actually crazy. I mean, they could quite literally buy Sony if they wanted to. They have so much money. It is just ludicrous. In fact, just for a, a short while, they almost passed Apple in terms of the world's most valuable company because Microsoft are not just like the Xbox. Microsoft have so much money for not only Windows and software sales, but the Azure platform alone is bringing them in millions of dollars a day. It is just absolutely crazy. Just recently, I put out a video uh, discussing the fact that Microsoft, when they approached game studios, was asking the studios a very simple question. What games do you want to make? And before, of course, the studios signed on the dotted line, they were rather hesitant and they said, well, what budgets are we going to have to work with? Like, if you're giving us a dollar fifty a day, then obviously it's going to be different to several million. And they said, no, that's not the question we're asking here. We're actually asking you, what do you want to make? And budgets are irrelevant. And they quite literally used the term, we are Microsoft. And so it's like, yeah, they can pretty much buy anyone in the industry. And so I would be not surprised if we do see some absolutely incredible acquisitions from Microsoft. I mean, 
one of the studios that I would have liked for them to have picked up back in the day would actually have been Konami. But I don't know if, to be honest, if Konami would sell to them. And obviously, nowadays, it could be a whole thing. Uh, Capcom as well could have been a really good acquisition for Microsoft back in the day when Capcom themselves were at their weakest. Because obviously, back in the day, Capcom were really struggling financially. Now, not so much. Either way, it's going to be fascinating to see how Microsoft can change their approach for the next generation Xbox. After all, this generation of Xboxes, even if they bought three studios today, it's not going to be, you know, a factor in this generation almost certainly. But the next generation, I would be pretty worried if I was Sony and possibly even Nintendo. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. No more stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.